Today we'll be talking about a beautiful novel called Sun Drunk by imaginary authors. We will talk about the perplexities of the story. I will let you know all of the great gory details and you will enjoy it profusely. For if you don't, I don't care. Stay tuned. What's going on YouTube? I'm Joshua and this is our channel, Sense Sense. To all my loyal subscribers and compatriots, thank you so much. And to all you new people who are checking the channel out and can't decide if you want to join or not, have a little love in your heart. Kiki loves me so you should love me too. The fragrance we're gonna talk about is very near and dear to me, mainly because it's not every day that people reach out to me and do very, very nice things and this guy, took the cake. Josh Myers over at Imaginary Authors got wind that it was my birthday back in the middle of July, that was the 15th. And also we were on the eve of my son's birth and he wanted to just make it extra special for me. So out to the mailbox I went and I got this bad boy right here, Sun Drunk by Imaginary Authors. If you're not familiar with the House of Imaginary Authors, it's a really cool and eclectic indie perfume house. And the basis of the fragrance house is that every fragrance is based off of a book that doesn't exist that's written by an author that also doesn't exist. As you can see with the presentation, it looks a lot like a book and it's just really cool. Comes with a really cool bookmark that you could use for a bookmark, but also you can spray right here and go ahead and give it a sniff. So let's go ahead and open this bad boy up and I'll tell you exactly what I think about it. So let's go ahead and open it up and as you can see you've got the bottle recessed inside. But before we go any further with that, I want to give you a little note or tip that a lot of people don't know about. When it comes to this fragrance house, Josh likes to play a little shenanigans when it comes to the book and it kind of has that whole like hidden thing with the book. If you open it up and you notice right here it says, be vigilantly curious because treasures are all around us. It's got an arrow pointing down and if you were just like looking at it, you'd be kind of confused. Well, if you reach right here and you open this up, there's usually a sample wedged and hidden in here. I took mine out already. It was Cobra and Canary, which is kind of different and unique and not really my cup of tea, but kind of cool anyway. So as we call it in Cajun country, you get a little line up, sha. Let's go ahead and get to the meat and potatoes of this review and talk about the fragrance itself. So now that we got this bad boy out, bye, bye now. See you later, okay? As you can see, the artwork is really cool. It's got the name Sundrunk on the side. I like to stack my bottles like this and it kind of looks like the spine of a book itself. It's really cool when it comes to their bottle presentation. It's uncanny and different than anybody else. On the back we have our notes and I'm gonna go ahead and read it and act like I didn't tell you that and look like this and be like, as you can see with this fragrance, it has notes of neroli, rhubarb, honeysuckle, rosewater, orange zest, and an imaginary note, which there's one in every fragrance from imaginary authors, a first kiss. The reason why that note is ironic and kind of cool is because when you're gonna smell this fragrance, it's gonna remind you of summertime. It's gonna remind you of sitting out in the sun, soaking up the rays. Maybe you're on the lake or out in the river and you're kayaking or canoeing and you're swimming and everybody's just having a good old time. And maybe you see that girl across the ray, you know, she's hanging out at the pier and you wanna to talk to her, but you've got this massive zit that's just throbbing on the side of your face. It looks like a small hand holding an apple. But anyway, you got enough courage, you walk up to her and you're like, how's it going, Sarah? My name's Steven and I just was looking over there at you and I just thought you were really cute. And then she's just so flattered that she goes ahead and gives you a kiss, even though you have that growth. Who am I kidding? She would definitely not kiss you if you looked like that. That would be disgusting. Sarah would want nothing to do with you. What you're gonna get from this fragrance is a light, airy, just warming, relaxing fragrance. Let's go ahead and spray it on the skin or else it gets the hose again. It's so good, man. That orange zest and that rhubarb marry perfectly and that rose water gives it a nice balance. Now, my wife thinks that it kind of smells like musty, rotten fruit, but I don't agree with her. I think it's the rose water that kind of gives her that vibe. I personally don't care for rose water by itself. I find that this balance is perfect though. What you're gonna get is that fizzy, orangey 
zesty feel, almost like if you were to freshly pour an orange soda and you were to sniff it. You're not gonna believe me, but I actually came up with that thought myself, but then I noticed on the really cool little bookmark it says, woozy and warm from the sun, we shared an orange pop and watched the surfer's last lines of the day. I didn't even have to say it, he said it, and that's exactly what you're gonna get from this. The only knock on this fragrance is that it tends to sit pretty close to the skin for the majority of the life of the fragrance. Outside of the first 45 minutes to an hour, it doesn't really project. It's only gonna last six to seven hours on the skin for me. I spray six to seven sprays, which is kinda heavy, but for a light fragrance, it's really not. And it really works well for me, but for some people, they need a lot more when they feel like they're paying a premium price for a fragrance. But it does exactly what I want it to do. I don't want to be overpowering. I don't want to be overbearing. I want to sit in it and I want to relax in it. And it's really a fragrance that I wear for me. When it comes to times to wear this fragrance, I think spring, summer, and early fall will be perfect. I think you can wear it at other times, but it won't have the vibe of that season. I think this would be a perfect office scent. It's not offensive, it's very appealing, and when it comes to Neroli, it tends to be in fragrances that just feel really uplifting and relaxing and inviting, and I think that's what you're gonna get from this. This is the third fragrance from that house that I've gotten. It falls directly in second place because it's Leapfrog Memoirs of a Trespasser, but it's definitely gonna sit behind Cape Heartache, which is a fragrance I've also reviewed, and if you wanna see that video, I'll go ahead and leave it up here. But this one right here deserves its own spotlight, and Josh, I just wanna tell you from the bottom of my heart, man, it meant a whole lot to me for a lot more reasons than you could ever care to know because, uh, yeah, it, it meant a lot. All right, guys, that about does it for me. If you smell this fragrance, let me know what you think about it. And if you haven't, let me know about an imaginary author's fragrance that you liked and what did you like about it. While you're at it, go ahead and share this video. That way more people can learn about this channel and enjoy it with us. If you like the video, guys, go ahead and like the video. And if you don't like the video, just click the like button anyway. Appreciate it. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. That way when my videos come out, they'll fall directly in your feed. And if you want to take it a step further and you want to be more dedicated to the family, then smash that notification bell. That way when my videos come out, you, my friend, will be the first to know. All right, fellows and ladies, you know what it is. I will sniff you later. Peace.